Come to us this night, O oh God. Speak to us this night, O oh God. Dwell with us this night, O oh God. Let the darkness of night gather us. Let light and warmth hold us. Let the tools be stored away. Let the work be over and done. Let this winter give us space for rest. But let hearts be healed, melting into spring. Thanks be to you, O Christ. Each night, may we remember your mercy given so gently and generously. O oh God, from whom each thing that is freely flows, As an outgrowth of our mission statement at Gloria Day, we adopted a set of guiding principles. One of them is that we as a church will combat racism and acknowledge our privilege. We have been learning and trying and practicing how we live into that commitment for several years now. So tonight is a night when we engage that guiding principle in some new ways in worship. And so we are absolutely delighted to welcome Just Move, Joe Davis and Dave Scherer to come and to help us, to help us come and, there we go. To engage us in the word 
um, after worship today, confirmation class, and fifth and sixth graders or any kids that are here that want to engage will meet downstairs with Joe and Dave, uh, meet in here, sorry, meet in here um, for an hour. Um, adults, you don't get to be in here. Um, <laughs> But we will meet, for those of you who would like to talk about your experience tonight, we will meet in the gathering place and engage that, but also want to invite you to come on Sunday, where they also will be working with us around engaging the Word and leading the forum at 9.30 on Sunday morning. So this work is God's call to us. So I give thanks that you are here and Thank you to the two of you for being with us. So come on up and take over. It's an honor and a joy to be with you all this evening. I'll be starting off by reading a scripture coming from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And it reads as thus. When he returned to Capernaum, after some days... It was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to a paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Thus is the reading of the Lord. Here we go. People, here we go, a little bit closer to people here. Uh, my name is Joe Davis, and I'm here with my friend and, and partner in rhyme, Dave Shear. And together we are Just Move, and we work through uh, the arts to bring us closer into racial healing and racial justice. And we believe in the power of poetry and music and theater and dance. And I want to share a poem with you all today as a reflection on the scripture. And we hear this story of the, the paralytic man, the man who was paralyzed. And he was trying to get closer to Jesus, but there were so many people who were already gathered around Jesus because they knew just then, as we do now, that whenever Jesus shows up, things happen. Whenever Jesus shows up, there's healing. Whenever Jesus shows up, there's more community, right? We come alive when Jesus shows up. But there were barriers to him getting closer to Jesus. He couldn't get as close as he wanted to get, but he had friends who showed up for him. And they showed up in a way where they removed those barriers. They literally cut a hole in the roof, right? And I think about that sometimes, how, how do we have to remove barriers for others? Who is showing up for me? I, I reflect on that. And, and, and when am I called to show up for other people, right? I think that Christ is always calling us to show up deeper in healing, deeper in community, deeper in this work of justice. So I, I've written a poem a long time ago, but I want to share it as a reflection on this gospel call that we all have to show up for each other, just as God has already showed up for us. Show up. We've each been called to this place, this time and this season. You may not yet know the rhyme or the reason. You may not feel, think, or believe in the same things I believe in. But we've been asked to show up. Show up wherever you are from, 
You could come here to be free. Bring your full selves, both your head and your heart. Your hands and your feet. And anything and everything infinitely beyond any duality, your sexuality, gender, race, age, or ability, we all have the ability to be. Without you, I'm incomplete. Without you, there's no we. I need you not just to survive, but to thrive. To come fully awake and alive with potential and possibility. Joining me at the table for this wide and there's lots of food to eat. So show up. And be fed and feed others, satiating a different kind of hunger, fueling the fire in our bellies. No matter what journey you're on, where you've been, or what you've done, all will be well when we're all welcome to laugh, cry, dance, write, breathe, and bleed into the margins, and follow God's call to the harsh reaches of who we are. Whether you run, walk, crawl, even if you fall, we fall in love. But just show up. Show up to answer the call to justice, to transform both the soul and the bodily world the soul inhabits. Show up with all your awkwardness and bad habits. Show up with your doubts and with your questions. No one here, you can ask them. Show up with your wounds and your scars. We all have baggage. But know that together, we can unpack it. This is no mistake. You're not here by accident. You're here to share the stories of your sacred passage. You are the only you that ever has been. You are not the magician. You are the magic. So show up to this place here where there's no grace, period. There's only grace, period. Bring your fears and insecurities. Let us marvel in the mystery. Let us listen to each other to life with a deep, holy listening. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? That's the sound of the genuine within you. The spirits are near you, but if you don't show up, how can anyone hear you? Show up, even if you don't know for certain. You may have the truth and healing for which this world is searching. In this grand universe, we are but small workers but with a big purpose because of our hearts widening the circle, hearts that are broken, hearts that are open, so a little light can shine through, a little hope for the hopeless. Wherever you go, simply know the spirit of this place goes with you. So go. Ready with sleeves rolled up, always growing, never fully grown up. Ready with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, simply to show up. Thank y'all so much for showing up. Let's keep showing up together, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it. Let's go. Thank you, Joe. From his best-selling book, right, <laughs> We Rise Higher, it's published by Spark House. Um, so, friends, my name is Dave Shear. I use he, him pronouns, and um, I just wanted to reflect a little bit more on this text because this uh, text from Mark is one that's very close to my heart because, like any good parable, I see myself in every character of the story. I see myself in the people that Joe mentioned already, the ones that were packed into the house, the ones who were feeling very comfortable and very on the, in the in crowd and weren't necessarily asking a question about, hmm, I wonder who's not feeling very included right now. I'm feeling very, very comfortable. I wonder who's shouldering the discomfort right now. I'm taking up a lot of space. I wonder who's being asked to shrink themselves right now. And so I can see myself in them. But I can also see myself in the one outside the house, the one saying, hey, wait a minute. What about me? Hey, uh, teacher, um, I have ADHD. Can you repeat what you just said? Uh, hey, teacher, um, I need you to uh, give me a movement break because uh, my brain works a little differently than other people. Um, so I think there's parts of us that can be on the inside of the house and there's parts of us that can be on the outside of the house. I, and I've also been the friend uh, on a good day and I've seen the need to cut a hole in the roof. I've seen the fact that this doesn't work for everybody. This space doesn't work for everybody. This, uh, the way we worship isn't working for everybody. Um, this facility we have, these stories we tell, they're not working for everybody. Is there any way we could adapt them a little bit and, and create a bigger space so that everyone has access to this healing? And I've been, I've been that, that man, the man who, who was crying out for healing. 
Um, I've had some really uh, difficult seasons in my own faith journey. Uh, my beloved and I decided that we were going to start a family. This is a while back. And I was taught that, um, you know, you, you look at someone and they get pregnant. That's what they taught me in health class. Um, that's not actually how it works. Um, and so it took a long time for us. And, um, and there were times during uh, the tough seasons where I would sit and worship and I, I, wasn't, I wouldn't sing and I wouldn't pray and I would just sit there. And uh, a friend of mine noticed during some of these moments and he asked me about it and I said, I, I, can't, I can't sing this stuff. I don't even know if I believe this. I, I can't pray this stuff. I don't even know what I believe. He said, he said you, don't, you don't have to. He said, you don't have to sing these songs. We'll sing these songs for you. We don't have to, you, you don't have to pray these prayers. We'll pray for you on these days when you can't pray for yourself. And so when Jesus talks about this community of faith that, that can carry us when we can't carry ourselves, uh, we're remembered that we don't do this alone, that this is a team sport, and that we can lay our burdens down, and that this community, this beloved community that God invites us into uh, will, will, will carry us when we can't carry ourselves and will bring healing to us. Um, and so if, if you're having one of those seasons, I just want to encourage you to remember um, that you don't carry it alone, that God's uh, love is big enough to hold it, whatever you bring, whatever, whatever fears, whatever anxiety, whatever doubt, uh, whatever uh, addiction, um, God can hold all of it. So um, this, this song is called Burdens, and I want to share it for you all and anyone who feels like they're just carrying it, even though, as, as Joe likes to say, even though you carry it well doesn't mean that it's not heavy. And so this is for folks who feel like they've been carrying too much. It's called Burdens. Come to me all who are weary, I will give you rest. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Those, those who have excluded, those who've been left out, those who have courageous faith, and those who dare to doubt. Those who have felt heartache and those who long to feel. Those who feast more than they should and those who need a meal. Those who seen injustice and those who have been blind. Those who think they've won the race and those who feel behind. Lay your burdens down. burdens down, lay them down. Sing, lay your burdens down. Sing, lay, lay your burdens down, lay them down. A woman enters stage left. She forgot her address. There is sadness in her step. Old man River used to hit her, made her bitter scars left on her hand from her left hand scissors. Forget that she was blessed with each and every breath. She's looking for some rest that all the rest can't give her. She hopes no one will hear her if she doesn't make a sound. She carries these burdens, doesn't know that she can lay them down. Lay, lay your burdens down. Lay them down. Sing, lay your burdens down. Lay. So I wonder if there's anybody here who came here with burdens today. Somebody who was carrying a burden of shame, a burden of uh, low self-esteem, a burden of anxiety. Maybe you heard something today that was hard to hear. But just remember that there is one who knows the hairs on your head. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I leave the room with such a cold feeling. I'm feeling worse for the fact that I'm feeling no feelings. Guilt overcomes me, wish I know what you've done with me. The person who I wanna be isn't who I become to be. And it feels like something I can't control. Empty in my soul, only you can make me whole. I'm trying to pivot, need forgiveness to live in the new. I don't know what to do with it. I guess I'll just give it to you and lay my burdens down. Sing it 
house one more time. Lady Bird is out. Lady Bird is down. You are made in the image of God, fearfully and wonderfully. God knows your name. God calls you by name. forward to spending time with you all in the next few days. Thank you so much for hosting us and um, we hope you'll keep your hearts open even though it's a rapper and a poet and that may not be a Gloria Day thing. We believe that, um, that God can use even wild music like that to speak to, speak to people. So thank you. I believe as of right now a rapper and a poet is now a Gloria Day thing. <laughs> During March, which is the month we're currently in, uh, it is food share month, and we are collecting as much rice as Gloria Day possible for Francis Basket, the neighborhood food shelf. If you brought rice tonight, now, during the offering, you can bring it up to the baptismal font and put it in the basket. As we sing our prayers tonight, the congregation is invited to come forward and to light a candle for the world and for all those that need our prayers. Soothe your 
our suffering was. Heal afflicted ones. Shield your joyous ones. Bind us all as one. Bless our shaded skin. Break down ancient sin. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Bless to us, O God, the moon that is above us, the earth that is beneath us, the friends who are around us, the rest which, was, which is before us. Amen. Fifth and sixth graders and confirmation class, we will stay in here for some more time with Joe and Dave. Adults who would like to talk about this evening's experience will meet in the gathering place created for community 
we share Christ's peace.